recounts the story of Mary as a young Jewish woman living in a patriarchal world dominated by violence and poverty, whom Mary calls, whom God calls to do God's thing. In response to God's invitation and the angel to which the angel voiced, Mary chose to be a God-bearer, a mother, a married woman, and a prophet for justice for the oppressed. After her encounter with the angel, an exuberant Mary dashes off to the hill country to help her older pregnant cousin Elizabeth. Imagine the scene as the mothers to be embrace and delight in each other's kinship and unexpected pregnancy. What if the purpose of this pregnancy stories, as Brian McLaren writes, is, quote, to blur the line between what we think is possible and what we think as impossible, to challenge us to align our lives around the impossible possibilities hidden in the present moment. End of quote. In the next passage in the Gospel of Luke, Mary proclaims a prophetic hymn of praise for the power of the Spirit subverting violent power and turning the world upside down for the excluded and outcast. Her prayer, known as the Magnificat, is a prayer of liberation for all those whose lives have been devastated by poverty, violence, and inequality. This prayer is our prayer today, as we work for a world in which everyone can flourish and which everyone is treated justly and fairly. In Luke chapter eight, verses one to three, we meet influential women disciples who not only accompanied and supported Rabbi Jesus, but bankrolled his ministry. With Jesus went the 12, as well as some women, Mary of Magdala, Joanna, Susanna, and many others. Now, how many sermons have you heard about the many other women who were in Jesus' group of disciples, I ask you. Since then to now, women have continued to spread Jesus' message, live the gospel, and build community. So why are they not being ordained for public ministry in all the churches and religious institutions? Amen. 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 Do I hear an amen? amen. <laughs> I do. The writers of the Synoptic Gospels tell us that not only the women, that only the women disciples were faithful to Jesus. They were with him when he died. They were with him at the tomb and the first to proclaim the good news of Easter. In John's Gospel, the risen Christ appeared first to Mary Magdalene and sent her, 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 to proclaim the good news to the male disciples. Amen. It is clear that Jesus treated women as disciples and equals. So too should religious leaders including the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church, follow Jesus' example and open all ministries to women, to ordination. Amen. Amen. Since this may not happen in the Roman Catholic Church, people ask often, the church and join a religion that ordains women? Very good question. First, the people are the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
not the hierarchy alone. Since baptism makes us members of the Catholic Church, no punishment, including excommunication by the Pope, and I have received many. <laughs> can cancel our baptism. Uh -oh. uh, Women priests are members of the church. Yes. Amen. Yes. This is our family. Yeah. Yeah. That is why we are here. Second, there are close to 1.5 billion Catholics worldwide many of whom want women priests. Right. <laughs> yes, right. Thank you. In addition, the second largest denomination, if they were a denomination, are Catholics who have been alienated from the institutional church. Catholics, for example, who are divorced and remarried without an annulment. LGBTQI groups are excluded from Eucharist, from receiving sacraments and treated as second-class citizens by the clergy. Third, 